for the Secretary of State. The, um, and if it's a title vehicle, they, they, they look to DMV for uh, the existence of a lien. But if it's, uh, if it's something that normally is not filed, uh, then they wouldn't check DMV because there's no, normally no reason to. I guess that's, I guess that's where I'm understanding it. If, in fact, you're not required to um, be, be titled by DMV, it's just something that you choose to do, then it seems that that would fall in the category of normally not filed or titled. That's right. And that they, they would go ahead and check with Secretary of State. Well, but if there is a title out and uh, someone else can rely on that title to, uh, to file their lien, uh, then the Secretary of State would have no record of it. And, and that's what would be the, the confusion in that uh, there are liens filed in two places. Well, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Fry. I understand uh, what Senator Simmons is, is trying to express, but uh, I understand that that's already the way it is. I mean, if there's a problem, there's a potential problem there, but we've got it right now is the way I understand it. Well, right. and if it is, it's because the DMV has been issuing titles to vehicles that they shouldn't have been titling. <laughs> Madam Chair, Senator <laughs> Simmons, that may be partially true, but as I indicated, it also goes into all of these other vehicles that are exempt or subject depending on how they're using it. Yeah. See, if I have a passenger car and I choose to use it as a race car, mm -hmm. I may have come to DMV and applied for title before I decided to use it off the roads. And so it's... But it's, it's still an automobile, though, uh, of a sort. <laughs> but if you're, if you're titling a farm combine, uh, just because somebody wants to have a title of it, uh, then there is no indication to a potential buyer or lender that there is a lien on that. Madam Chair, Senator Simmons, um, we aren't now issuing titles to farm combines, and I don't think it was our intent to do this, although that House bill that is still pending would require us to. Well, I, I may be confused with that one, but um, I, I remember either in the interim committee or must have been in the interim where, where this came up that uh, you did say that you were titling farm equipment or someone from the department did. We might title a, a farm trailer, for example, because it just is a trailer. And the fact uh, that it's that's being used incidental to a farm may not even be told to us at the time it's registered. Or but how about a farm tractor? Yeah, sure. um, if it's not used in, in conjunction with an agriculture operation, it is a motor truck. And if someone wanted a title, they could get one. I, I don't mean a, a semi-trailer and a tractor I mean a, thing, no, but I mean a, a one big tower and yeah. tractor with the little front wheels that isn't made to go on the highway. Madam Chair, Senator Simmons, I believe I don't have like the full code. Go ahead. You don't have what? I don't have the full code in front of me, but I believe that by definition, the farm tractor has to be used in in relation to agriculture. And if that same vehicle is not used in relation to agriculture and is not a fixed load, it is a motor truck, even though it is of the type that you just described. So it's a requirement that you title it. Mm -hmm. I could have a garbage dump and use a tractor to push garbage around. That isn't farm, and it certainly wouldn't need a title. Madam Chair, um, Representative Harper, and then Representative Actually, Manson. I'm just first. That's all right. <laughs> I'm trying to get your attention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just reach over and touch me. <laughs> Representative Harper. Uh, I, I can't visualize a system, or a, not a system, a instance, or having a title to a farm tractor, for example, it would be any advantage to you in getting a, a loan on the truck. Thank you. Why don't we just make an exemption? They aren't, they aren't used in the, in, in the, what I know of. But she said they, they do. Representative they do Bands? They do what? Why, uh, <coughs> if I could make a suggestion that we set this one aside. And oh, I'm sure we'll set it aside. <laughs> I just want to get... And, uh, and go back and find the uh, references to what is and what is not subject to title. And, and uh, uh, we can talk, I think, 
I can you mean it. under the Uniform Commercial Code? Under the Uniform Because we've got the list under, under here right in front yeah. of And where did you find that? In the bill. Uh, 1031 or, or uh, 1031? Well, Section 5 of this bill oh. has in its entirety, except for maybe a change that was in one, Senate Bill 100, yes, has the list so. of, of uh, <coughs> exemptions, right? Correct. Yeah. It's Section 177 of the Vehicle Code. The farm trailer one is uh, up at the top of page 3. But yeah, well, I think we need to do this. But Representative Manzer had a suggestion that we... I, I think Senator Simmons point is well taken and historically we think of when there's a title that a person who has lien will use as the collateral so whether or not it's it's a real problem I think that that it does need to be addressed and it seems to me that you could just in this legislation provide for an exception that is uh, make a provision that the title that vehicles that have come under the provisions of this kind of titling cannot be used for purposes of the lien holder. So I'm not feeling well, but I'm making any sense to you. I think so. In that case, why are they having them titled? <coughs> because I thought it was for the purposes of basically convenience of the person who has the... So he can sell it. Hmm. Oh, okay. So in other words, if this is a treating certain equipment as a special class, and that this does not come under the same provisions as other vehicles that are required by the state to be titled. Yeah, presently, I, at, on line 17, page 2, okay, yeah. the, the title from the state is not required for a vehicle unless the vehicle is operated on the highway. It does not exempt campers or travel trailers. Mm -hmm. well, well, let me uh, let's, well, let's, do some more research on okay, that. Well, let, but let, and also let Claudia ask the Credit unions, banks, savings and loans, uh, Secretary of State, and people who deal with the Uniform Commercial Code. I guess my point is, I'm not aware that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's been going on that way for how many years now? As long as I can remember. <laughs> as long as anybody can remember. Ma'am, And sure. so I probably, there's not a problem joining. Excuse me, if I might point out, probably a more common situation is in relation to the fixed low vehicle. There are specific provisions for registration and titling those vehicles, and yet a good many of them are not because a good many of them are never used over the highways, and therefore they're exempt. <coughs> and it's totally up to how the owner chooses to use them and whether they want to apply for registration and title so the way that they give it, and that's that's in current law. As, yeah, well, that's uh, my point. Is that Seven one point twenty ten. 71, are we, we found it? I don't know whether this is it or not. 71, 71 2010. Subsection 37. Something goes up to 2010. What have we, what have we found here? Well, that's the section in the Uniform Commercial Code that has to do with uh, the security agreements uh, uh, affecting uh, um, vehicles. Okay. Well, that defines <coughs> security interest. Pardon? That defines security, security interest. Yeah. <coughs> well, uh, I know there's someone in here that specifies the uh, the fact that a title vehicle is is uh, the security interest is noted by on the title vehicle only, and uh, I, I just can't put a finger on it. Okay, well we'll check it out. <laughs> Any more questions on this? At least we've got the uh, the questions identified. Okay, forward to and this Joanne, you're just going to stay right there because you're going to come in next on Senate Bill 125. the next bill in your bill book and it has a measure analysis on it. Okay. More title. <laughs> Senate Bill 125 deals with the title and registration records.
current law provides only for a registration record and indicates that the registration record, along with the title, certificate of title, is prima facie evidence of ownership. Um, this is a problem that was true in a lot of areas of the code where the term registration and title were used interchangeably. Um, and we've tried to you know, correct those and clearly indicate which was being addressed in various sections. Mm -hmm. We only have one computer record for vehicles, and it contains information on both the title certificate or ownership and the vehicle registration or the authority to operate over the highways. Um, we also have title information on vehicles not currently registered. Senate Bill 125 establishes provisions for a title record and allows the division to continue to house title information and registration information on the same vehicle record. It also changes and makes the title record rather than the registration record prima facie evidence of ownership since the title is what is the ownership document. Um, there is another section, some minor related changes in sections two and three relate to the public records and the word registration is being deleted so the entire vehicle record is public, not just the registration. And section, okay, section one adds the um, new language. <coughs> Section one, section two. Section two is the one that addresses the public. Oh, okay, I see. It just says that it's the registration of vehicles, and so you're saying that all the vehicle records are public. Correct. And the same change is made over on page five at the top. What's 244? <coughs> Police vehicle. Um, of the vehicle code. I'm just, just moving that. There, there's um, no change in that. That's just a curiosity question. I believe those are the undercover confidential. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think maybe I asked that same question before, and that's why I thought that was the answer. <laughs> it's hard to remember from last summer until now. Okay, and then three <coughs> corrects it in the C. Three, section three on page five at the top just again deletes the term registration and makes the entire vehicle record public. Okay. Good idea. Are there any questions on this? I'm not sure. Representative Harper. What does it cost? What does this cost? Does this have a cost associated with it, Joanne? Madam Chair, Rep Representative Harper, no, it just conforms with current practices. What's this language under Section 3 about reasonable fee? Uh, that's um, already current language. Um, the only change in that is if you look on line 2, it says the fee for furni furnishing information concerning registration records um, is a reasonable fee, and this says vehicle records. Does that make any changes in fees or anything? Madam Chair, no, it doesn't. We still have the, the fee for the registration or? Correct, based okay. on costs. Okay. Are there more questions about this? Yeah, I do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. The problem addressed uh, somewhere by Claudia says that the current law provides only for registration records. Now we're going to increase and include tiling records. We're going to do that for nothing? No, we charge for it. Yeah, well, how much do we charge? Seven dollars. Right? Um, Madam Chair, uh, it depends on what information they're getting. They can get a vehicle record for two dollars if they're just getting the current record. Oh, okay. um, they can get a history for five dollars where they go back and get all the information from previous transfers and that. Um, in answer to Representative Harper's question, we currently have a record, a single record, and on that is all the information pertinent to the vehicle, like the name and address of the owners. 
um, any registration plate that we may have issued, the expiration of the registration plate. But the statute only references our having records on registration. There are no provisions in current um, statute that even indicate that we have to keep a record of the titles we issue. Okay. And this is just clarifying that we do keep those records and, and you know, just complying okay. with The fees that they charge are in the red book in, uh, on page 27. <coughs> just, just tell me. Uh, which, which one do you want to know? The fee for uh, an abstract of a driving record or? Well, I guess my only concern is I'm rather suspicious when we begin to increase the number of records and say it isn't going to cost anything. Well, we're not increasing the number of records. They keep, they keep registration records now and they keep title records. But as I understand it, the law has been unclear that you were to keep both, but we've been doing it for years. So my understanding of this bill, Senate Bill 125, was that uh, we're going to uh, talk about vehicle records and then we very specifically talk about requirements for registration and requirements for title of vehicles. And we have, uh, and there's a whole other section that, um, that talks about the the fees for each and every little piece of anything that you ask for from the Department of Motor Vehicles, right? Correct. Only most record information is by rule. That's true. Yeah. But it's already there, so what's... It's already okay. there, and it will not change because of this bill. So, okay, so what are the, the different kinds of... So what he's saying is what are the different kinds of, of things that people ask for, and what are those... Uh, fees established as, and we're not, we're not adding to your list, right? Correct. Okay, so what's on your list now? Okay, so well, no, I, I'm well, more work concerned work. with the workload. There will be. Are, and I guess the, the simple question is, are we with this bill increasing the workload of the department? No. I don't believe we are. Okay. If I find out differently after hearing all I've heard today and in the interim, I'll do something violent, probably. <laughs> I'll be very irritated and upset. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, the, the next biennium will be the proof <laughs> we did. So. Well, just let's, for the record, you know, uh, put it on right here that in no way uh, have, have we ever intended in the interim committee or in this subcommittee that this change any operation. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. This, is the subcommittee satisfied with that? Have I been hogging it too much and nobody else got a chance to answer the question? That never happens around here. <laughs> you sure? Sometimes <laughs> I get carried away. <laughs> okay, are there any more questions on Senate Bill 125? Is there any objection to the Madam Chair. Oops, Claudia. <laughs> Just so the committee knows, this bill has one mighty conflict amendment. Oh, um, <laughs> Because we've decided that that should be done early rather than late, um, those will be brought to the full committee this Friday in the Senate so that they can be done and uh, council can forget about them because it's starting to be a huge mess. Um, anyway, in order to avoid reprinting Senate Bill 100. Well, yes. Okay. They're all conflicting with Senate Bill 100, but some of them will look huge and um, council would prefer to put them in while they're in the possession of the Senate, simply so everyone gets used to the process. But will you please, with counsel, very carefully look at those to make sure <coughs> there are any problems that are arising? I have been for two reasons. One of them, the one you're concerned about, the other one is that for some reason the uh, computer out at the printer has been doing funny things. It has you been dropping it. lines and gobbling things. And the computer at the printer has been yeah, doing atmosphere. real yeah. weird things. It's the atmosphere. I think it's Someone the somewhere has been doing some strange things with a couple of bills that I've been dealing with in other committees. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're sick the lottery out of the turn. 136, the lottery bill. Oh, wait a minute before we go into that. Is there any objection with recommending this on to the full committee with the due pass? Or, 
Okay, I'm going to wait for 128. Where's 128? Again, Joanne. While Joanne's coming up. Yes, we had the most garbled amendment on a bill in the Sunset Review Committee that you could possibly imagine. It, they had half of what the committee wanted and part of what uh, someone else had recommended that the committee had totally disapproved of. <laughs> and it appeared in between and then at the end another part that the committee what the committee really wanted that was really the correct one that should have been the first part and it was pretty wild. <laughs> so, I don't know if the computer did it or no person did it, but it was a mess. We thought we were we got even more paranoid than what was already on. <laughs> Go ahead, Joy. Okay. Senate Bill 128 covers numerous sections of law which provide for the reissuance of plates, stickers, registration cards, identification cards. Um, usually in such situations as where the original has been lost. Current law in many er areas uses the term duplicate. In some cases, exact duplicates are not issued. For example, an owner may have changed their address since the last time a title was issued and the new title will reflect the new address where the previous one did not. Changes in one, Senate Bill 128 would allow for either duplicates or replacements to be issued. The one exception is in section 8 sub 4 on page 3. This section provides for issuance of only replacement registration stickers, and this is consistent with current practices. The distinctive number on a registration sticker is an inventory control number, and each, carry, each sticker carries a different number. Um, section 14 on page 7 and 8 of the bill covers dealer plates, which are issued to licensed dealers for operation of vehicles. Current law uses the term duplicate and referring to additional plates dealers are authorized to purchase. Changes in this section of the bill clarify that these are in fact additional plates, not replacements or duplicates of um, previously issued ones. And there is a minor conflict in this area with other portions of this bill as well as with Senate Bill 112. Um, If you look on page 7, line 15, the word extra has been inserted in, pr in place of the word duplicate. And in all other places in this bill and in Senate Bill 112, that is referred to as an additional plate. And I don't know that there's really any difference, but it is a minor conflict that perhaps by changing this here would eliminate some further problems. Um, I can go through it a minute. <coughs> Remind me of 112. Uh, it's already gone? Madam Chair, it'll be up next Monday evening, I believe. Oh, okay, so we can be consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, if you'd like, I can go through each section change or... Uh. <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, let's, let's look at it. Go ahead. Uh, John, do, do, do you retain the word duplicate in any place in here? Um, yeah. In most places, both the, it's either <coughs> um, duplicate or replacement. So there's an option. Um, in no place is there just a duplicate by itself. Some, some places, though, you still use duplicate or replacement. Yes. Well, I see here one on page. I think most of them. I think most of them are either or. But but in one situation, what is it? The, the driver license. The driver license. Um, where, where we. I, I I keep having this feeling that I I'm losing my mind because I can't remember what we've done before. But what did we just get through having in the committee that uh, removes replacement because we don't issue replacement. I'm sorry, it remains duplicate because we don't issue duplicate, we issue replacement, and that's a driver license. Madam Chair, um, I no. believe that is correct, although I haven't been following the driver's bills. I don't believe that the division would have any problem if the word duplicate was 
eliminated and the word replacement was the okay, only Okay, so just to clarify my head, what we were talking about that in the other bills that I'm having a hard time remembering was the, the driver license. Okay. Well, I think that in sure actually there, none of these would actually be a duplicate because uh, isn't the date of the replacement uh, given as of the date of replacement and, and uh, some of them at least say duplicate on them. <coughs> at least the driver license. Is there. So if, if the date is different, it is not a duplicate, it's a replacement. Correct. And I think in the driver license, we eliminated the duplicate and just replaced it with replacement. Okay. And but I suppose we consistent. <coughs> that should be done here. Well, no, what we're doing here is just the opposite. We're adding our replacement. Well, we're adding our replacement when we probably should be just uh, re taking out duplicate and putting in replacement. No, because I think this is a slightly different situation. Mm -hmm. They're not duplicates. Madam Chair, um, well, let's fix it. I guess that's why I'm asking my question too. I think we left it as either or because um, I don't think we considered the date being changed, but in some cases virtually everything on there is identical aside from, as Senator Simmons mentioned, the date. Um, I don't believe we would have that much of a problem if the word replacement was the only one there. I don't think replacement necessarily even precludes a duplicate. It just indicates we're giving them something. Are we being consistent, Claudia? Do you want to say something? Yes, Madam Chair, and, and to Senator Simmons' question, um, this discussion about duplicates and replacements went on all through the interim and has continued since. And in fact, there's something else I will tell you when I get done saying this. In some places, council suggested leaving the term duplicate. Um, because it didn't hurt anything by still being there. There's in fact a phrase that says a duplicate will have the same fee as a replacement, so any concern about the fee is covered. But because in some cases someone may quibble that what they're getting is a duplicate, um, it just covers all bases. And it doesn't it doesn't lose anything <coughs> keeping it and council was concerned that there might be a loss somewhere by removing the term duplicate. Okay. I, there is I won't quibble with anyone willing to wear a belt and suspenders both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so on the advice of legislative council, we're doing it the way we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I know, thank you. <laughs> Representative Harper? Well, I was just going to say that I couldn't imagine the system coming to a halt if we did it either way. <laughs> <laughs> They've been, they've been issuing replacements for years when they were supposed to issue duplicates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Madam Chair. Claudia, you had one other yes. thing you had to reveal to us? Well, yes, that would be a good way to put it. Always <laughs> flinch when you say that. <laughs> uh, if you all look in your bill book, in the blue bill book that you have in front of you, under the bills that are reported out, you will find Senate Bill 107. And Representative Lindquist does not have a bill that I can get in the chair. Oh, we need to get her one. Yes. In fact, we do. Okay. Um, look at section 8 of 107, on page 8 of 107, and look at <coughs> section 10 on page 4 of Senate Bill 128. Okay. And you will notice that those oh, sections. Minute, wait. On page on 128, page 4, section 10, line 34. Mm -hmm. 107, page 8. Which one? The face is the same, but they've taken it out there and they yeah. left it in there. It's, wait a minute. And Senate Bill 128, page 4, section mm -hmm. 10. Okay, got that. And Senate Bill 107, page 8, section 8, which is line 4. Oh, okay. Line four. Okay, I now have my one finger on line four of 107, page eight. You will notice that those sections amend the same section, and it would appear for the same purpose. Um, this came as sort of a surprise to all of us. Uh, I think what happened is during the interim, 
the discussions of duplicate and replacement kept coming up at different times and in different documents that were provided. 107 was drafted earlier than 128. Um, 128, according to my discussions with the Motor Vehicle Division, is their preference. One way or another, there will have to be a conflict amendment, and it is the committee's choice which section they would want to have prevail. Okay. okay. C. <laughs> Don't both sections do the same thing? Nope. Line 4 in 107 says the fee for issuance of a I'll read the new language, replacement registration card. And, and in the other bill, it says the fee for issuance of a duplicate or replacement registration card. And then, um, mm -hmm. and then if you go down two more lines in each bill, how dumb. <laughs> In 107, it says the fee for issuance of a <coughs> registration plate, and in the other bill, it says the fee for issuance of a replacement or a duplicate. Oh, God. <laughs> Where is it the same 